What's up, everybody? I'm Mark. I'm Ryan. And together, we, we are the Northwest, Northwest Sports Fanatics. The NFL Draft. Right. They made us wait, and they made us wait. And to me, it, it, it was just as expected. It was, it was an awesome draft. Right. Well worth the wait. You yeah. know, I don't like it pushing it to May, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, this draft is one of the deepest drafts we've seen in many, yeah. many years. Kind of reminds me of the... RG, Andrew Luck, Russell Wilson draft, but maybe a little bit more depth mm -hmm. on the defensive side in this draft and the O-line too, so we're going to have to wait and see. Not, not as much star power no. as that draft, but as far as quality players, man, this, this draft was off the chain. Um, so we just want to give you guys our top 10 uh, teams from this draft that we think had the best draft. Right. And um, so we want to start off with the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland Browns. Johnny Football, you wow. know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, he could be the franchise guy. They're not really treating him like it right now. It seems like they're trying to tone him down a little bit. But uh, I do think that he will pan out, and uh, it may take a while, you know, mm -hmm. depending on with the Josh Gordon you know, suspension. We're gonna have to kind of wait and see. Uh, but their defense has always been in the top ten mm -hmm. in the last few years, so I do like the Johnny Football pick and uh, Justin Gilbert. You know, cornerback. Mm -hmm. I do like him as well. I mean, I think that's a nice, solid pickup that they had. He's kind of a no-name player. You know, not a lot of people not know many, about him. Unless you watch college football. Or, unless you watch college football. But he'll be an instant starter for them. And then, obviously, uh, Joel Patino, uh, obviously O-lineman as well. Him and Johnny are going to get on the field at some point, you know. But I think Justin Gilbert immediately will have an impact for that Brown defense. Now, for me, um, with, the, with the Johnny football thing, I mean, you... If you look at it, uh, the best quarterbacks, it, it don't matter who you line up out there and have them run routes. They're going to make them better. Right. That's what makes them special, like Tom Brady and, and Russell Wilson. Because going into Russell Wilson's rookie year, if you looked at his receiving core, it was like... Yeah, not a whole lot of weapons. You know, and he still made each player better. I mean, he, Golden Tate is who he is. Uh, somewhat because of Russell and Baldwin and, and right. so on and so on. That's the way I look at it with Johnny. He's going to make every player on that team much better. Uh, the best pick for me for them was the Justin Gilbert pick. Right. Now you got your, your two bookend corners, you know, go opposite of J Joe Hayden, which you just made the, the richest cornerback in the NFL. Right. Um, the best value pick, the wild card pick for me is Pierre Desir. Now, not too many people know about him. He's from a small school out in Missouri, Lindenwood. He's the wild card. He's uh, 6'3", he's long, he's athletic. Now you have three starters potential at the cornerback position. Right. And you know in the NFL, you need three really good corners. Right, and I know since, uh, obviously, with Johnny Football on the offensive side of the ball, they need weapons. Mm -hmm. So Josh Gordon, if he's out for the year, look for Jordan Cameron, obviously, to get the ball a lot in that tight end position. And that might be his little comfort guy, mm -hmm. his little Mike Evans that he had in college. And uh, I imagine he might have a huge season this year, depending on how fast Johnny Football, if he's going to be the immediate starter or if they're going to go with Hoyer to try him out first. But uh, watch for Johnny Football to make some waves. I mean, it might take him a little while, but his heart and his I'm commitment, fan, you know, I think he'll end up making that team a, a nice little contender in a few years. Mm -hmm. All right, and, uh, so the next team we, we thought had a great draft. We're going to go with, uh, of course, the, the Houston Texans. Right, great draft. When you draft number one, you can't help but to have a great draft. Right, I absolutely. J.B. on Clowney, you mm -hmm. know, the next maybe Julius Peppers, mm -hmm. you know, in the draft. Uh, I like his size. They do question his heart his, and his commitment his to the game, too, his, yeah. you know, his motor. But I think once he gets out there with Watt, he will show that, you know, he is worth the, the number one pick mm -hmm. uh, out there as well. But they had some other nice picks, too, on uh, offense and defense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one of the uh, top picks for me for, for their draft, I have to go Lewis Nix. Right. He, he, he fell off a, a little bit in the draft, slid further than he was uh, normally expected to go. Now, when you team him up with Jadavion Clowney, Nix, J.J. Watt, and right. uh, Whitney Merciless, right. wow, you have four great uh, defense alignment there. Yeah, and if you um, watch any Notre Dame games, you saw you how good Nix was. Yeah. You know, so he has a definitely a nice little you know piece to fill mm -hmm. in with the rest of those pass Big rushers. disruptive kind of events. Wolf would like I think with a, a, a better pass rush. Right. Um, the wild card for that uh, for their draft for me was Tom Savage, right. uh, the quarterback out of Pittsburgh. Um, he's kind of a, a project. Nobody knows what exactly he's going to get. You're going to get from them, right? So that can be kind of a wild card. They may have found their their QB for the future. I I actually think that they'll start him immediately. Mm -hmm. I think that the I think obviously Bill O'Brien had a vision. You know, they wanted to go Clowney, and then they picked up Xavier Suafilo. 
Knicks, and then you got C.J. Fredericks, you know, mm-hmm. from Iowa, a tight end. So you're getting the pieces there. And obviously, they didn't, they're not sold on any of the QBs in the draft. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they would have went Johnny Football or Bortles. They would have picked somebody. But Savage is the wild card. You don't really know how good he's going to be, but their O-line is decent. Mm-hmm. We'll see if Arian Foster can stay healthy. Andre Johnson, you know, can stay healthy. And they might be able to do something. You know, obviously, they're going to be better than last year. Yeah. And they're not going to go 2-14. and 14, mm-hmm. So they'll, they'll be much better. All right. So look out for Tom Savage. He's he has all of the measurables, big, strong quarterback. Right. Um, so our next team up, uh, we're going to go with the Oakland Raiders. Great draft. Yes. And that's very rare for me to say that the Raiders had a great draft. But uh, Khalil Mack. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm going to go on a I'm going to say I'm going to go on a limb right here. But I personally think that he will be better than J.D. on Clowney. Mm-hmm. I think that they play obviously two different positions: outside linebacker and DN. But to me, he is a better player. More, more motor, you know, more hustle, better awareness, can intercept the ball, get you a tackles for loss. He's going to be disruptive. He's wearing the 52, so mm-hmm. now they got their little Ray Lewis there, you know, obviously there. And uh, they had a couple other good picks, too. Keith McGill at corner. Mm-hmm. I do like that. Pick Derek Carr at QB. Mm-hmm. Will he pan out as their starter? Maybe, maybe not. And then Gabe Jackson on uh, mm-hmm. offensive guard. I like him as well. What did you see from the Raiders? Uh, for me, their, their best value pick, uh, for me, I went with Gabe Jackson. Gabe Jackson was... One of the top two guards, supposedly, in this draft. Right. Um, he slid down to the third round, so I think that was actual value to get Gabe Jackson in the third. Right. And uh, Keith McGill. You know, uh, a lot have been made of the, the bigger corners, the Shermans and the Browners. And uh, at 6'3", he definitely fits that mode. Yeah. And like I said, the Raiders usually traditionally have bad drafts, and they haven't been really relevant since they played the Bucks in the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. you know, back in 2 But I really like this Khalil Mack pick. Mm-hmm. I like what they did. They still, I think, need to blow up the organization. They need to kind of, you know, maybe make some changes with the coach and the D coordinator and the or mm-hmm. coordinator, but they're getting in the right direction, especially if you can get a face of the franchise like Khalil Mack. I, I know Raider Nation is going to love him, and he is going to be one of the better defensive players in this draft, hands down. Yeah, well, I don't know if he's going to be better than Clowney, but more we, versatile we, we than Clowney. See. Yeah, I, I think he is more versatile. He can do a lot more things. Um, but that's another show. That is another <laughs> show. So next up, um, we want to give props to the St. Louis Rams, and it hurts me to say that because we helping the Rams build a team. Right. Yeah, great draft. They got probably arguably the best tackle in the, in the draft, Greg Robinson. Mm-hmm. So what I'm hearing right now is they're going to do a Tyron Smith like the Cowboys did. So he's not ready to do left tackle immediately. Mm-hmm. So at least we'll have to wait you know, with obvious training camp, but they're probably going to put him on the right tackle for the first year mm-hmm. and then transition him to left tackle the second year. Mm-hmm. And if they do that, I don't think any problems from Greg Robinson. He's going to be a monster on the field, you oh, know. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be, obviously, pushing people over. But they had nice pieces in the draft, too. D-tackle Aaron Donald from Pitt. Very solid. LaMarcus Joyner, hybrid mm, safety nice. corner. I really like that pick as well. And then you got Michael Sam, situational pass rusher. Will he make the team? Yes, I think he will. Will he play a lot? No. But when he gets in the game with guys like Robert Quinn and Laurinaitis, I mean, they have a lot of depth. And that D-end and that D-line is going to be scary good. Yeah, that D-line is, is, is awesome. Uh, for me, the, the best pick for me for uh, the Rams was Trey Mason in the third round. Right. You know, you, you've been searching for your franchise running back ever since Steven Jackson left. You tried Richardson and you right. tried Zach Stacy, And uh, now you have Trey Mason, to, who me, I think, can be a, a three-down back. He has to improve on his blocking right. uh, on passing situations. Um, their best value, um, of course, I mean, Michael Sam. Right. You know, you get the D- the SEC defensive player of the year in the seventh round. Right. So it- it's proven that he can play. Um, so you, I think you got to steal there in the seventh round. Yeah, I think so too. And I think a lot of people question his toughness you know can he make it and i think he can and i think the organization like the rams was a good organization for him to go to Uh, i felt like the only other organizations that would have been able to carry him the in the right way was maybe be indianapolis colts or maybe like new england patriots Mm -hmm. but i think the rams with jeff fisher that was a good solid pick and he might surprise people is he ever going to be a pro bowler probably not but will he be a good situational pass rusher yes i think he will yeah great pick uh you know he Went to school in Columbia, Missouri, which right. is about an hour and a half. So that's why I wasn't that much hoopla in St. Louis because right. they already knew. Yeah, they knew how good he was. was. All right. So next up, uh, we want to go with uh, our next winner, San Francisco 49ers. The Arguably Richard the best draft in the NFL. getting rich. Right. Wow. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, they had a, a handful of picks, the most mm-hmm. picks in the draft, so we didn't know how they would trade up or mm-hmm. trade down. But uh, a lot of good quality players that no one knows about. Mm-hmm. First, Jimmy Ward, nickel, defender. I mean, this guy is going to be plugged in immediately in the secondary. Carlos Hyde at running back. Mm-hmm. So maybe Michael James on the way out. Um, you know, Frank Gore's getting a little older. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they have some players where they can kind of rotate. But uh, the best pick to me was the center from USC, Marcus Martin. Mm-hmm. I really like him. I think that he's very underrated. I think you can plug him in immediately. Uh, Brandon Thomas has good size on the mm-hmm. line, too. Uh, and then the, also another little wild card pick, Chris Borland. Yes. Right? Chris Borland, linebacker, um, he lacks size, mm-hmm. right? but he has a really good motor, and he's a tackling machine. Yeah. Will he start immediately? No. But watch for him on special teams, because I guarantee he'll make some plays, and eventually he may be able to get some more playing time, especially with Navarro Bowman out with the injury. Yes. Uh, there'll be some room for him. Yeah, Chris Borman, man. Wow, what a player. He 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 reminds me so much of Zach Thomas. Yeah. I wow. Would, yeah. So he's the 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 our age, new age Zach Thomas. Right. Um 49ers, um, for me, uh you 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 mentioned the Jimmy Ward. Uh you got Jimmy Ward and now you pair him with Irk Reed. Right. So you got a safety safety tandem for years to come, so you're you're set there. Um my best value was Brandon Thomas. Uh guard out of Clemson was uh Highly thought of as the best guard in the draft, right. but he tore his ACL. Um, so you you you're picking them, red shirting them this year, get healthy, and hopefully next year he'll come back 100. percent Right, and to lose Dante Whitner, right, and to lose you know Goldson, Deshaun Goldson, two Pro Bowl safeties that were considered top three or four mm-hmm. in the last couple years, besides Earl Thomas, the best in the NFL, and then to put Antoine Bethea to bring him in from the Colts in this mm-hmm. draft that they had. Uh, you're not really losing a lot. It sounds like you are, but uh, the way that they're drafting, I mean, it's they are going to be scary good. Are they going to be as good as the Seahawks as they were last year? Who knows? But they are drafting very well. And uh, Harbaugh, you, you picked the right players in the draft. Yeah, shout out to the 49ers. Uh, next up, we want to go with your squad. The Bucks, The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Right. I, I think we're on the up and up. You know, it's going to take a, you know, I don't know how many years it'll take with Lovey, how many they're going to give him, but excellent draft, mm-hmm. you know. I know I was disappointed with uh, the Johnny football. I, I want my friend. I wanted their franchise QB, but I can see where they're going. They're kind of building the mold that Lovey had mm-hmm. at Chicago. They want big, tall, wide receivers and tight ends, and they hit it right on the head in the draft. Um, Mike Evans. Johnny Football's favorite target, you know, 6'5", good hands, good speed. That's a good red zone, obviously, threat. And then they picked in the second round, mm-hmm. right, tight end from UW out here in the Northwest, Austin Safarian Jenkins. Mm-hmm. And he's a top three tight end, so I think you pair him up with VJAX, and you've got a lot of tall players, so that's nice, good red zone weapons. But some of the sleepers, running back Charles Sims. Mm-hmm. See, I kind of questioned this pick in the beginning because you have Doug Martin there. But Doug Martin's more of a, a workhorse, kind of mm-hmm. smash mouth running back. Charles Sims is more of like a Darren Sproles, poor man's Darren Sproles. He can catch it out of the backfield. He's going to give the looks for, obviously, you know, the O coordinator, Jeff Tedford, to see if we can open up the offense because we were the worst in the NFL. Obviously, in offense, we just can't score the ball. Defense is good, but um, we're going to have to wait and see how that, you know, pans out. And I do like Robert Heron. Six-round wide receiver pick. He's small. He's a speedster. Out of Wyoming. Will, will he get the ball? Will he get to play? I'm not sure, but I know with a speedster like that, that was a nice little blend of picks. Uh, what did you see? Uh, for me, uh, I, I think even though you got Mike Evans, I think the best value was uh, the Safari and Jenkins pick. Right. Um, big tight ends that's fast, can jump, can make people miss. They don't come around often. No. So I, I think that was a good grab to, to kind of – Fit the mold on what Lovey built in Chicago, so they needed that big tight end. I love that pick. And uh, me, uh, Charles Sims, uh, as you mentioned, he's a, a different kind of back from from Dougie Doug. Right. Um, kind of sprawls like. Right. What is the word that I would use to describe him? He can catch the ball in the backfield. Um, you can give him draws and right. little screen plays. So he, he should be exciting, and also he should help out in, in the return game as well. Right, and Tampa did not draft one defensive player in the draft. And I've mm. never seen a team go all offense, and obviously my team needs it. But I think I'm kind of building the mold. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how many years it's going to take, but eventually a wild card berth in the next couple years I don't think would be impossible to think, especially with these weapons that they have if they can stay healthy. But we do have a good coach now, mm-hmm. so I'm really happy about that. So shout out to the Bucks for, for a great draft. Um, next up, we're going to go to Shot Town, the, the Chicago Bears. Great draft. Wow. Great draft. Um, Kyle Fuller. Exactly. Arguably <laughs> the, the best corner in the draft. I like him a lot better than Justin Gilbert for the Browns. Mm-hmm. Very polished. I watched him you know, quite a bit. 
Um, he is coming off a few injuries here and mm-hmm. there, but they had some really good quality picks. Kadeem Carey, I think in the fourth round from nice. Arizona. Um, you know, he's kind of a, a thicker back, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But when he hits the hole, he has good vision. So mm-hmm. I think that's good because Forte is kind of unreliable. Safety Brock Vereen I thought was a steal. Uh, but I think the, the, the special pick that you will both agree on, Will Sutton from mm-hmm. Arizona State, the yeah. D-tackle. I personally like him just as much as Aaron Donald from Pitt. Obviously, that the the Rams took, mm-hmm. and uh, he's got a lot of energy. He kind of mm-hmm. has that Vontez perfect, yeah. uh, you know, mentality. I don't know if it's in the, in the water in mm-hmm. Arizona State, but it seems like everyone is so angry mm-hmm. on that defensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. But they really do pan out. What have you seen? Uh, for me, uh, of course, Cal Fuller. You know, he he kind of crept up on me. I was looking at Gilbert as the the best, or or Denard, Darkeese, Darkeese Denard right. as the best corner, and then Cal Fuller just starts shooting up the boards. Right. And as I watch more tape on him. Man, this 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 kid, he kind of resembles to me um, D'Angelo Hall. Right. He's 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 fast. He's 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 aggressive. He goes for the pick. He plays the ball. So that was a great pick. And of course, you know Peanut Tillman left. So right. you need someone to pair on the other side of Jennings. So I, I love that pick. And Will Sutton, man, wow. You know you lose Melton, right. Henry Melton, who before he tore his ACL was. Besides Geno Atkins, probably the best D tackle in the game. Right, playing well. Yeah, awesome. You lose uh, Peppers. Right. And so the Will Sutton pick should should help them, you know, on that O line with uh, Shane McClellan there. Right. And but then uh, obviously you picked up Jared Allen. Yeah. So I mean, there's going to be some pieces there already. So I mean, I don't. Are they going to take the next step to go to the playoffs? Maybe not. Mm-hmm. But I do really like they've hit it on the head in these last two drafts. Obviously, with the O line last mm-hmm. year, and then obviously with this year, uh, with the nice quality picks, I do like the Bears draft this year very so, much. So, shout out to the Bears. Um, so, our last team, we want to give our uh, Northwest sports fanatics props to for their great draft is the Pittsburgh Steelers. Great draft, you know the Steel wow. City out there. You know you had nice quality players outside linebacker Ryan Shazier. Mm. I like him a lot. Very aggressive. He kind of suits that mentality mm-hmm. of Pittsburgh. And then uh, DL. A defensive lineman, right, from Notre Dame, Stefan Tuitt. Mm-hmm. You know, him and Knicks were a great pair. Obviously, uh, Rick, you know, we know that's your that's your, that's your team out there, Notre Dame. But uh, nice quality picks, you know, fills some holes, you mm-hmm. know, that they lost. And then uh, Martavis Bryant, you know, wide receiver, gives them a little bit of speed. Uh, you know, obviously, they lost some pieces in the last couple of years. Big Ben needs some weapons, so mm-hmm. I do like what they did. What about you? Uh, for me, you know, uh, the Ray, Ray, Ryan Shazier and uh, the Stephen Tuitt picks are, are, they hit it right on the nose. Right. And when you think of the Pittsburgh Steelers, the first thing you think of is hard-hitting defense. defense. And their, their, their defensive line kind of went down. You know, Ziggy Hood ain't been the same. And right. Casey Hampton moved on years ago. Right. So I, I, I like those picks. And Martavis Bryant, wow, that's the wild card to me because – where can you find a 6-4 receiver that runs a 4-4? Yeah, nowhere. So, he obviously, he's a little bit of a project. He's right. not as developed as a, maybe a Marquise Lee or Mike Evans or Sammy Watkins. But right. I, I think he has the potential to be a special player. Yeah, especially when you had certain players leave and Antonio O'Brien and some of these other you know receivers are going to mm-hmm. have to step up. But uh, they're not in rebuilding mode yet. Because Big Ben is still there, but mm-hmm. obviously getting a nice piece like that should help to their offense, especially when you're going against, you know, Ravens, mm-hmm. obviously Cleveland and Cincinnati, whose defenses all predict, you know, normally are in the in top ten. Yep. So that was a great draft. I just want to give a quick shout out to two other teams that we didn't uh, get a chance to touch on. First off, the Jaguars. They had a great draft. We'll look out for the Jaguars. They up and coming. Bortles, Marquise Lee, mm-hmm. Allen Robinson, Brandon Linder, Aaron Colvin. Storm Tel- Johnson. Storm Johnson, Telvin Smith. I mean, wow. And uh, the Packers. You you finally got you a playmaking safety with Clinton Ha Ha Dix. Right. You also added a, a two great wide receivers in Devontae Adam and Jared Aberdeenis. Aberderis. Aberderis. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. He's from Wisconsin, right? Played against Oregon in the Rose Bowl. Very underrated. Good route runner. Uh, I think Brandon I think, Stokely. Well, I mean, not Brandon Stokely. Wayne Corbett. With right? More speed. A little bit more speed. Well, more speed. So there you have it. That's our uh, Northwest Sports Fanatics NFL Draft recap. Stay tuned. We're gonna have some more articles and videos for you. Yes, sir. So tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Share the page, Northwest Sports Fanatics.